So thank you, thank, thank you very much. Um, yeah, BCX has been involved with the director's event as the main sponsor now for, for three years in a row. And uh, the purpose of, uh, of being involved with uh, the event is to make sure that we, we create a platform where both public and public sector leaders can meet and talk about the issues that are facing South Africa. But more than just talking is to find solutions that are facing our country. I think if you look across the country, we've got, uh, a, we've got huge challenges. Whether we are talking about the pedestrian economic growth rate, whether we are talking about the unemployment, whether we are talking about gender-based violence, whether we talk about the healthcare system that is not uh, taking care of uh, um, the needs of our people, uh, even if we talk about uh, uh, the moral fiber of our society. So across the board, there are a myriad of, uh, of uh, challenges and it is not possible for government alone to solve them. This kind of or this kind of challenges will require both public and private sector uh, to resolve them. I think if we look in the recent past, um, we as a country, public and private sector, worked very hard to to handle the COVID uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, both. Uh, um, first wave and a second wave. We successfully worked together um, to manage that. And that's a good thing for the country. We as BCX, we're part of that. We're part of the team that developed systems for government to quickly understand and be able to manage um, people who have got uh, uh, COVID. We are not the only ones. As a matter of fact, we partnered with a number of companies. We were a system integrator to put that together, but it required a number of companies with different types of solutions to put this together. So the same thing is required uh, going forward. If you think about where we are now in the third wave, not only must we maneuver through the third wave, but we have to find a solution for rollout of uh, um, the, the COVID vaccine. If you think, I think as of today, we probably have only vaccinated 3% of the population. 5% of what of uh, people that must be vaccinated for us to have had immune immunity. That means we've got a long way to go. And uh, leaving this in the hands of government alone, I think will be irresponsible. As, uh, as the leaders of industry, we need to work together and find a solution. I must say that after the event, the last time we, we met last week, uh, we as a BCX and actually as a telecom group have met a number of, uh, of companies to find a solution for rollout of vaccination. At the moment, yes, it is for people with comorbidities, people over 16, teachers and health workers. But as soon as that is open for everybody else, we want to find a solution that uh, uh, will help to uh, accelerate the the rollout of vaccines so i believe that this platform it's a good if it's a good platform for getting both public and private sector to talk about talk about and find solutions for the problems facing our country so one of the main questions um during the event was about uh, how do we build appropriate skills uh, for the economy, for the requirements of the, of the new economy. And uh, as you will have uh, heard from the, uh, the various contributors, there are two schools of thought. One school of thought is that uh, we must go back to the basics. We must go to the basics and make sure that uh, our learning and teaching uh, take place in our schools. That's one school of thought. The second school of thought is that uh, let's not let's not uh, worry about that for a moment. Let's prepare our kids for what is an emerging economy, um, and those seems to be two divergent um, schools of thought. My view is that it's both. It's neither or. The 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 challenges like these uh, seldom have got either or solution. In many cases, they require us as leaders to have two opposing ideas in our heads and not go crazy. So actually, you require both. 
I think the way we should be thinking about that is to think of a short and medium term and then long term. Uh, in that way, we can put all of this in perspective. So first and foremost, short and medium term, it is important, absolutely important that we go back to the basics. Make sure that we get the basics for both primary and tertiary education. Make sure that we encourage um, STEM education um, across the genders, across uh, social divides. That's absolutely important. I think it is a, a shame for us as a country, so many years into our democracy, that we still have schools that have got no basics, have got no toilets, has got no running water. Those are the basics that must be done. I absolutely agree with that. As we do that, it is also important that we look at the requirements of the fourth industrial revolution. That's absolutely important. I think it is uh, uh, President, Mbek, President Ramaphosa to say, and I'm paraphrasing him. And his view is that uh, there are uh, uh, many countries in, uh, in Africa unable to absorb sufficient number of young people. And the reason is because the schooling system is not producing um, people that are required by the economies. I'm just paraphrasing him. He's absolutely correct. So in the short and medium term, while we deal with the basics, we need to understand what are the requirements of the fourth industrial revolution? What does the economy require? And prepare our children in line with that. That for me, it's a short and medium term. Long term, there is absolutely no question in my mind that education will be transformed um, as we move in the next coming 10, 15 to 20 years. Just like you have seen what digital revolution has done to consuming of television, consuming of entertainment, uh, the way we shop, the way we play, all of those have been transformed. There is absolutely no question that education will also be transformed. Now, none of us has got a crystal ball to, to think how education will be transformed into the future. But as an interesting, um, yeah, the OECD uh, created um, possible scenarios because they also don't have a, a, a crystal ball, possible scenarios of how education can be transformed. And it's about four scenarios. Um, at the top, it's a, a simple one that all of us can understand and that the education in the future will be the following. One, it's uh, the structures and the systems will remain the same. However, technology will be introduced where children are giving personalized training. That's one scenario, right? And that's an easy one for us to understand. But at the, at the other end, it's a scenario where all of this is totally transformed, where education is a, um, as, you con as, as, you, as you consume it. So, so education, it's a anytime, anywhere. And education, and in that, in that scenario, there is no, no difference between formal and informal education and the schooling system and the structures are totally destroyed. Now, and there, technology plays an important role. Those are possible scenarios. So as we deal with the uh, immediate requirements, we need to be thinking about long-term and how we prepare our country, how we prepare our country to operate in that environment. So post the event, what, are, what, what do we think the leaders should be doing? What are the expectations um, that we have on, on the leaders that attended? First and foremost, uh, we have to work together to navigate through the uh, COVID pandemic. It's important that as leaders, we focus on uh, protecting lives and livelihoods. This will require us to work together it will require innovative thinking. It will require decisive action. That's on. That's number one. But you will recall when I presented that uh, I quoted a, a report, a research um, that says that there is a there is a crisis of leadership in the world, and that across the globe, people do not trust uh, societal leaders anymore, and uh, or rather that trust is diminishing, and that is across the board whether we're talking about religious leaders, we're talking about political leaders or CEOs or um, yeah, journalists and editors. So just across the board, there is, a, there is a trust deficit. So over and above 
this this challenges in South Africa requiring both uh, requiring bold leadership. I think they require authentic leadership. It's important that people um, can see that we are authentic. It is important that we as leaders find a way to merge the requirements of different stakeholders. But talking to the CEOs, it's obviously absolutely important that we take care of the, of the needs of the shareholders. But with the kind of challenges we have, we need to look beyond. We look be to look, we need to look beyond the boardroom, but look at other stakeholders, societies, etc., and work together to find solutions. In my opinion, in times of crisis, that's when you have some of the most innovative solutions. And South Africa today is at that stage. What is required is for us not to think of individuals, not to think of any individual companies, but to find a solution to work together across the spectrum with government and the private sector to find solutions for the country. I have no doubt in my mind, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, for the sake of our country, for the sake of our children, we as uh, leaders in South Africa have got what it takes to find the solutions. Mm -hmm.